In this video, we continue our journey through the dark Bible story from Judges 19. As we saw previously, Israel had no king. Each one of the twelve tribes was governed by a chosen elder, and this arrangement brought peace. But it was about to come to an end. On that day, a messenger arrived at one of the tribes. He held a bundle wrapped in coarse cloth. The guards led him to the chief, who unwrapped the parcel with wary hands. Inside lay a severed piece of human flesh. Similar scenes unfolded across Israel. Messengers delivered grim parcels to each tribal leader. Confusion turned to horror as they realized the parcels came from a Levite, a man of God. The elders gathered at Mizpah, their faces etched with distress. The Levite stood before them his garments torn and eyes hollow. He recounted his tale, how he and his concubines sought shelter in Gibeah of Benjamin, how vile men surrounded the house, and how his concubine was abused until dawn, leading to her death. I sent her pieces to you, the Levite said, his voice heavy with sorrow, so you would understand the outrage committed in Israel. Such a thing has never happened among us. The assembly murmured in anger. An elder from Judah rose and declared, We cannot ignore this wickedness. We must purge this evil from Israel. One by one, the leaders agreed to stand united. They resolved to confront the tribe of Benjamin and demand justice for the grievous sin committed in Gibeah. The tribes of Israel sent messengers throughout Benjamin, demanding, what about this awful crime that was committed among you? Turn over those wicked men of Gibeah so we may put them to death and purge the evil from Israel. But the Benjamites, defiant and resolute, refused to deliver the wicked men. We don't know if this was due to tolerance for the men's evil or because it was impossible to identify who exactly was in the mob that night. But what is certain is that innocent lives would be the price for those wicked men's crimes. Israel gathered a massive army to seek justice for the atrocity committed in Gibeah and started the war. On the first two days of battle, Israel suffered heavy losses. Desperate, they sought the Lord's guidance, who assured them of victory on the third day. Using a strategic ambush, Israel drew the Benjamites out of Gibeah and launched a surprise attack, ultimately defeating them. The surviving Benjamites fled, but Israel pursued them relentlessly, ending the life of every single one they could catch. Only 600 Benjamite warriors survived by escaping into the mountains. The war was won, but unfortunately it was not a war for justice as it seemed in the beginning. It was actually a blind act of vengeance as dark as the initial crime. The men of Israel went back to Benjamin and put all the towns to the sword, including women, children, and innocent individuals who were not among the mob and who did not participate in the war. The Bible specifies that even animals' lives were not spared. What started as a quest to purge evil turned into a catastrophic act of destruction. As the rage calmed down, the Israelites realized how terrible their vengeance had been. They had committed a genocide against one of their own tribes. The only Benjamites who survived were the 600 male warriors who had escaped to the Rock of Rimmon. The only hope for the Benjamite legacy to survive was to get those 600 men to reproduce. And to do so, the Israelites needed to provide them with spouses. But there was a problem. The men of Israel had taken a solemn oath at Mizpah. Not one of us will give his daughter in marriage to a Benjamite. The grim oath meant that the Benjamites would go extinct. The Israelites, full of remorse, cried to the Lord, Why has this happened to Israel? Why should one tribe be missing from Israel today? The Israelites began searching for a way to atone for the crime they had committed against the Benjamites. However, the solution they devised was as dark as their initial act, as we shall see in the following chapter. Early the next day, driven by a desperate need for answers, the Israelites built an altar and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Amid their sorrow, the Israelites asked, 
who from all the tribes of Israel has failed to assemble before the Lord? For they had taken another solemn oath that anyone who failed to assemble at Mizpah was to be put to death. The Israelites grieved deeply for their fellow Israelites of the tribe of Benjamin. Today one tribe is cut off from Israel, they lamented. How can we provide wives for those who are left, since we have taken an oath by the Lord not to give them any of our daughters in marriage? Searching for a solution, they discovered that no one from Jabesh Gilead had come to the assembly. A decision was made swiftly and with cold resolve. The assembly sent 12,000 fighting men with instructions to put to the sword all the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead, sparing only the virgin women. They found 400 young women who had never slept with a man and brought them to the camp at Shiloh in Canaan. The whole assembly then sent an offer of peace to the Benjamites at the Rock of Rimmon. The Benjamites, weary and desperate, returned and were given the women from Jabesh Gilead, but there were not enough for all of them. The people grieved for Benjamin, recognizing the gap that had been made in the tribes of Israel. The elders of the assembly pondered their dilemma. With the women of Benjamin destroyed, how shall we provide wives for the men who are left? The Benjamite survivors must have heirs so that a tribe of Israel will not be wiped out. We can't give them our daughters as wives, since we Israelites have taken this oath. Cursed be anyone who gives a wife to a Benjamite. But look, there is the annual festival of the Lord in Shiloh. So they devised a daring plan. Go and hide in the vineyards and watch. When the young women of Shiloh come out to join in the dancing, rush from the vineyards and each of you sees one to be your wife. Then return to the land of Benjamin. When their fathers or brothers complain to us, we will say, do us the favor of helping them, because we did not get wives for them during the war. You will not be guilty of breaking your oath, because you did not give your daughters to them. The Benjamites did as instructed. As the young women danced, the Benjamites sprang from their hiding places, each man capturing one to be his wife. The sudden commotion, the cries, and the frantic movements created a scene of chaos. Then, with their new brides, they returned to their inheritance, rebuilt their towns, and settled in them. With the crisis resolved, but the scars of the conflict and the oaths taken would linger in the collective memory of Israel, just as the story of Numbers 31 from the Bible. Watch the video to dive deeper into a grim yet very instructive Bible story.